The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. To understand the scriptures very clearly, dear brethren, one thing we can quote to you, to make it to understand the reality of the word which constantly inculcates for us Bible doctrine as number one priority. And that one thing what we can inculcate for you is very simple. This is your day. This is your time. And this is your life if you're breathing. And if you want to be with the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, given graciously for you at the moment of salvation, you need to faithfully prepare in the word of the Lord. And though you have the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher or not, since you're a royal ambassador for Christ, every believer ought to know the polytheism of privileges, the unique spiritual life, the protocol plan of God. There is no pleading of ignorance nor excuse to tell I do not know these things nor I have been trained for that. You have the spiritual IQ, you have the indwelling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when you are in fellowship with Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And you have to give number one priority to grow up in Bible doctrine day by day process. And that day by day edification complex of the soul will lead you to understand the reality of the truth. To share the happiness of Christ and to be occupied with Christ. And that true happiness of Christ demands nothing but the knowledge of Bible doctrine when we walk in integrity of the truth. The great integrity of the truth which which can take from Bible doctrine alone. And why I'm saying this is your day, in the past, right from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he was been resurrected. He is the only one case that he's been resurrected and seen of the multitude that he went into heaven. In Acts 1 8, we have the description of that. But now, right from that period, there is none who have been resuscitated or resurrected. But we have only one thing, that is Christ, our Lord. And apart from him, everyone who died, died as a martyr unto Christ, giving us something better, making us to realize the reality and the power of Bible doctrine. This great man who laid down their lives graciously and freely, including Apostle Paul, who said, for me to live is Christ and to die is profitable. That great man's doctrine in the dying discourse, what he has been written in Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians, comparing to the Titus as well as written letters to them to tell how carefully you need to be taking care of this doctrine which has been committed into your trust. Today, if you can ask the pastor teachers in the congregation, do you have a trust? They will say, yes, I have registered my name and I have a trust. A trust with the license of FRCA to communicate with the foreign amount. And with the ADG 35-1 and 2 forms, which the government standards wants to say, that if you want to receive any foreign money, you need to have such and such kind of a things. And you know what? These people, they want to run fakery of these things and want to prove wrong records and they want to say, yes, we have these things because just for the sake of money from foreign country, representing over here in India to tell that they are poor people, that they are orphanages, that they are this, that they are XYZ trends. And they build up trust on upon that issues, but not the trust which has been given to them through the Bible doctrine, if at all they have the bona fide gift. That is a clause. Apostle Paul was very great when he told in 1 Timothy 9, 16 and 17, the doctrine that has been entrusted to my hand, I have taken it with care. The dying declaration of 2 Timothy 4, 2, guard the doctrine, guard the faith. You need to take care of the doctrine very cautiously and carefully. But they do not know what is the trust which have to be taken in Bible doctrine. But God, the Holy Spirit, who is faithful for us, has delivered the writings of this man. 
into the one completed canon of scripture. And now, Lord God, the Holy Spirit in every age he knows, or in every era he knows, that there will be certain men who will be teaching the word of the Lord, and they are the key people for his work. And he trains them up no matter what it comes, what the hurdle may come, what the failure may come, what the thinking may happen. He trains them up, he leads them up. Not to tell miracles, healings, or tongues. But rather he trains them up to tell doctrine, 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 doctrine. He sends them to tell about the isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word through the proper dispensing technique of dispensations. He wants them to be in doctrine. And he wants to take care of doctrine. And he doesn't have any other work apart from teaching and inculcating Bible doctrine. If you love me, our Lord said, kept keep my commandments, and the commandment of our Lord, as per John 1.18, which has been written from the point view of 1896. The Gospel of John has been written later time, during the period of the book of Revelation. That's when during that time. He comes now and tells in John 1.18, Exegy, oh my, exegy, so no man has seen God at any time. But the one who came from God, from the bosom of Lord God the Father, has declared it unto us, or has been made manifestingly clear for us. So he says that manifestation process have to go have to be gone through the process of exegesis alone and no other trends. He doesn't compromise with any other stupid activities of the minds of these people, which they think it is absolutely great for them. So the real duty of the pastor teacher to have a true fellowship with Jehovah demands doctrine, doctrine, and doctrine alone, no other way than doctrine. Through exegesis. And in order to understand the doctrine, we need to look upon the isagogical background, what Apostle Paul had kept in mind, to write those things, like the Hismas games, like the triumphant of glory. Without isagogical background, we cannot understand, and we need to categorize the subject so that the people can build upon doctrine upon doctrine, line upon line, precept upon precept, thinking upon thinking. That's what, how it could go. That's what, how it happens. That's what, how it really comes. But today, what is happening in our churches? The bona fide gift of a pastor teacher has been taken care of for some extension to just to make some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley. Where are you standing today? You are almost all 2,000 years now after the resurrection of our Lord. From AD 30 to AD 2030, still we are 15 years away before, but we are exactly in 1985 years after the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and where is the importance of doctrine, and how many lives have been shed from 1985, so many years. 1,985 years, the long journey of church history, the long journey of Christendom. How many faithful men have left their life for your cause, for my cause, so that today we can stand upon their blood and look upon Bible doctrine. Rather than looking upon this, what are we looking today? Money, things pertaining to money. Are you not shameful to know this? Are you not, are you not shameful to know this? That you are exchanging the glory of Lord for a lie. And how many days more you will survive on this earth? If you are not heeding the warning discipline or intensified discipline, you will eventually burn out in sin unto death, the reverse process of reversionism. Your great backsliding will not correct you, dear brother, and take it granted, whether you believe it, take it, consider it or not. Your backsliding may be happy with you, but not with Christ. And why such kind of a sudden deaths in our lives that we are going through and are looking around? No fear of Jehovah. That's what it is. No desire for the knowledge of truth. That's what it is. No desire to look upon the grace orientation towards Bible doctrine. That's what it is. Why will not Lord correct you? Because you are losing the track. You are losing the point. You are losing the direction wherewith Lord has called you to stay. The only direction which have to be Bible doctrine, you have lost it. Thinking that there could be something greater than this and I will follow that. 
and maybe that has led you to understand that you are here for money and you will never understand that the longer you stay over here for the sake of money the longer evil possession will be to you not demonic possession you are thinking these thoughts as a believer but we are called for what to cleanse out that garbage to cleanse out that evil nature through the only intake of Bible doctrine. No other procedure Bible recognizes than this. And then what do you want to prove? After you die, you will take and go the money what you accumulated over here by the name of Christ, in the name of Christ, by cheating people, telling them fakery and giving them false hope, making one million people to come to your crusades, telling that they will be having miracles, healings come rather than doctrine. What money you will take after you die? Naked you came, naked you go, nothing you take. But the blood of these innocent people will be upon your head when you neglect like doctrine to turn them out. And in fact, even you have been sponsored by Satan, not by God, to do this. be happy to look around your report justified among men but God knows each and every man's heart what is justifiable in the minds of men is a great abomination in the sight of God and what is pleasing into the sight of God that you need to think and what it is that our Lord has said I will send my messenger one of the priests in Malachi 2 7 you need to think the reality of the truth on the lips of a past teacher rather than the stupefied things. The way you are blaspheming the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it really pierces my heart to tell to you again and again the same thing in weeping. The temporal spiritual gifts that have been seized, you are still pulling along like a string, like the elastic which has to be taken out. And cheating these innocent people by not giving them doctrine. You will be having a tough time, I don't care, my duty is to just warn you. So that you can know and realize the reality of the word, that we are standing here to tell the truth. The truth derived from ice concepts of dispensing technical dispensations, provided you are a male believer, and you have the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, and if you are not having the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, you are been given the gift of an ambassadorship or a royal priesthood, so that you can inculcate, inculcate, and learn doctrine, doctrine, and doctrine alone. And not the stupefied stuff of Satan. And greater the men from the year of AD 30 who have been given for us this doctrine now. In the 15th century, the Protestantism came out. In the 16th and 17th century, William Carey. 18th and 19th century, the doctrine which could be led through the Bible treasury of William Kelly. Taken care by 19th century by Dallas Theological Seminary, Lewis Perry Chaffer of Schofield. And then furthermore, taken care by us at present by Robert Bunker Thieme. So that you can stand upon doctrine, dear brother. And not on anything else. God desires in his truth. Have you not known Proverbs 35? Every word of the Lord is pure. And it is not a mixture of impurity. Remember that. And when God has told exegesis, it will be exegesis. When our Lord has said dispensations, it will be dispensations. You love it, take it or not. It is left to your own fate. But remember, every man's work will be made manifest at the judgment seat of Christ. And that will be a late day for you to weep and to plead ignorance at the judgment seat of Christ. Because you have rejected doctrine and inculcated the useless and worthless things. It has been written long back in 1896 before the completed canon of scripture itself. Grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. It has been written long back to renovate your thinking day by day. It has been written, the inner man, though the outward man perishes, inward man has to be renewed day by day. It's a day by day process. Not now. Until now, even though you have passed out around 1900 years. If you are not giving number one priority for right original language of the scriptures or proper exegesis or isagogical, categorical and exegetical explanation of the word in the dispensing technique of dispensations, then there is something wrong which you need to correct. Ponder over these things as we shall continue in the next day.
Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was going to fellowship you through the word. We pray that Lord God of the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge our in Lord. Father, we ask any question, Father. Amen.